And now, ABC 7 News at 11, on your side. A growing movement tonight. Thousands of marchers in Baltimore and major cities across the country. Tonight, dozens of new arrests and louder calls for justice in connection with the death of Freddie Gray. Now, tonight's crowds were peaceful. They spoke up, they chanted and carried signs, but they did not incite violence. Some stayed on the streets past the curfew, but did not clash with police. Now, the epicenter of all this, of course, is in Baltimore, and that's where Tom Rousey is live tonight with the message coming from these crowds. Tom. That's right, you know, and as far as the scene in West Baltimore tonight, yesterday was much better than Monday, and today has been much better than yesterday. Let me show you what's going on. We have police, some of them still with their riot gear here at this hour, and to the right of them, we've got vehicles from the National Guard, a bunch of armored vehicles over here, so that's the scene. But let me show you what's different from last night. Pennsylvania Avenue over here. There's no car on it right now, but it's open. That's much different from last night when there was a line of police here. It's another sign that things are improving. And also, things are improving because there was a giant and completely peaceful rally that happened tonight. Don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! Tonight, thousands marched. No racist police! Sending a message to police and also politicians. They are facilitating the murder of black individuals. Are we going to stand for that? No. So what do we want? This is about justice. Justice for people of color who continue to be killed by cops across the country. Jasmine Mickens of Silver Spring was among the thousands. We have to have our presence known right now because otherwise no one's listening to us. The march was peaceful. I mean, look at this. The, uh, look at all these kids. It was multiracial. It doesn't matter who you are. We want change. We don't need them. Some said it was exactly what the city needed, especially in a week where images like these have painted Baltimore in a negative light worldwide. What you see on TV is not what Baltimore is about. It doesn't have to be like that. That's not going to help. That's not going to do it. We need this. This is what we need. Oh my God, this is amazing. Many hoped the protest would get the attention away from riots and back on Freddie Gray. But reminders of the state of emergency Baltimore is still under were never far away. National Guard troops went out of their way to keep their distance and did not get too close to the protest. And again, back out here live, you see, as I said, Pennsylvania Avenue, it is open tonight. This was completely shut down last night. If we come over here, this was the area where last night folks were throwing bottles, firecrackers at police, and then they fired gas in return. We've seen nothing like that here in West Baltimore tonight. In fact, there was actually a fight at this intersection that got a lot of attention. Found out later it was between two brothers. One of the brothers ins was insisting that his brother go home and follow the curfew. The other one didn't want to, so that caused the fight. Certainly a much better reason for a fight than some of the things we saw out here last night where there was, again, gas and things being thrown at the police. Reporting live in West Baltimore, I'm Tom Rousey, ABC 7 News. Okay, thank you, Tom. Now, tonight's demonstrations showed a different tone and feel from the violent riots that we saw on Monday night. A total of 235 people have been arrested. They were arrested that night, and now about 100 of them have been released. By law, anyone held for more than 48 hours without receiving charging documents has to be released from jail. Hmm. Allison. Well, Leon, new tonight, United Voices questioning the city's response to this crisis. A crowd of residents, leaders, even gang members are pressing for answers. Some criticize the curfew, others demanding an update about the investigation into Freddie Gray's death. Richard Reeve is live at Baltimore City Hall for us with this. Richard? Yeah, Allison, certainly a different atmosphere here at City Hall from where Tom was reporting. This is where the media is pretty much headquartered. And over here, of course, we have uh, some of the National Guard troops here. Uh, but this meeting was actually held outside of a church, a fascinating group of people, as you said, including gang members, talking about the future of their city. Our children and our thugs, they are misunderstood. After all the violence, the protests, the unrest. Plus Crips. Who's out there? Baltimore is facing a new normal. The National Guard is here, and so are police, amid some hard truths. We'll never know what Freddie could have given to this world. We'll never know what he could have done. The death of Freddie Gray much on the minds of gang members, youth advisors, and community activists who met to talk about how to heal their city and move forward. Be a peacemaker, basically, a freedom fighter. Words like justice, opportunity, employment are part of the dialogue. 
Youth advisor Ted Sutton says young African-American men here need a sense of hope. I want my young men to have jobs. I want some of my young men to have mentors. The group says there has to be a way to resolve the often toxic relationship between African-American youth and the police. I can't walk my daughter because I feel that the police stereotype me. I don't want my daughter seeing that. The group hopes the results of the police investigation will come soon. A delay, they say, can only mean trouble. The longer you wait and then you disappoint the people by saying, OK, we're not going to indict these officers. And back here live now, we wanted to show you something before we go. This is East Lexington Street. Take a look at this. We have that curfew in place barely a soul out here now meanwhile in front of city hall of course uh, we do have the national guard still staging here and of course the big concern is what will happen by friday when this police report is due to prosecutors will it happen or not and again we're expecting more protests over the weekend. Live in Baltimore, Richard Reeve, ABC 7 News. Okay, Richard, thank you. New at 11, a Baltimore teen slapped by his mother during Monday's unrest says he knows she was looking out for him. That video of Toya Graham grabbing her son Michael, pulling him out of that dangerous situation, went viral. And Michael says his mother told him to go home from school, but he didn't listen because of his friends. And now he realizes how lucky he is. I understand how, how much my mother really care about me, so I just got to try and do better. Many people, including Baltimore's police commissioner, praised Graham's actions. Well, tonight this movement has spread far beyond Baltimore. Hundreds marched here in Washington, D.C. tonight, ending a short time ago at the White House. And a second protest in northwest Washington ended just moments ago. Jay Korf is there now live. Jay, tell us about it. Well, then that protest just broke up here along the U Street corridor. We're at 13th and U. You know, there's a lot of feeling of solidarity tonight on the streets of our nation's capital. Late tonight, hundreds of protesters with, with purpose and with passion rallied and marched from Chinatown. They then went to the Wilson Building and then on to the White House. And then some of them broke off and came here to the U Street corridor. D.C. Ferguson, an organization that evolved out of the unrest in Missouri, organized this event as they have many others. Tonight they raised their voices in unison over the many issues that concern them, police brutality, racial, political, social injustice, economic equality, just to name a few. And of course, tonight they are calling for justice for Baltimore's Freddie Gray. That's the story here live in the district. Jay Korf, ABC 7 News. And Jay, New York City saw a massive protest tonight as well. Officers moved in before dark and started making arrests there. At least 100 people were arrested, mostly for blocking the street. But there are no reports of any violence or any injuries.